Today I want to discuss a little bit about uh, doctor and hospital expenses here in uh, the Philippines, uh, as well as my own personal experience at uh, Cebu Doctors Hospital here in Cebu City, the Philippines, uh, with a couple different doctors and the hospital as an outpatient. Uh, also, uh, some of the information I have is from uh, reading blogs for over two years, forums and blogs, and uh, doing some research online, that type of thing. I'll pass some of that information on, on along to you. Uh, I'm also going to discuss a little bit about my uh, situation, uh, my experiences with doctors and hospitals in the U.S. before I left, and uh, try to keep things in perspective a little bit. Uh, now let me give you a little bit of background. The night before I flew out of Los Angeles International Airport, LAX, I stayed at the Travel Lodge real close to the airport and uh, they offer free uh, shuttle to and from the airport just in case you're interested. Uh, but that evening I felt a little irritation on the uh, side of my, side, in, on my calf on the side of my left leg and didn't really think too much about it. Got up in the morning, I was still irritated a little bit, but uh, off I flew, uh, I think about one, uh, one or two p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, got, to the, uh, uh, got to the Philippines, uh, Cebu City, and uh, headed for my hotel. I'd, I'd booked a, a hotel, uh, Premier City Suites, for the first week I was here. This is not Premier City Suites, but it's a nice picture. It's, I believe it's a Coronado Hotel on Coronado Island uh, next to uh, San Diego, California. Uh, anyway, I checked in a couple days later. My leg was uh, starting to swell up a little bit and irritating, so I went about uh, hitting all the uh, drugstores looking for Epsom salts. I, I know that you can use Epsom salts to... Uh, try to suck out uh, infection, those kind of things, and uh, no such thing in uh, Cebu City that I could find, so I bought some sea salt, and I tried that, and when that didn't work, I tried some garlic. Uh, garlic has some uh, real strong antibody uh, characteristics, but uh, the problem is it wasn't getting down into the infection. About the third day I was there, uh, my maid uh, came to me and said, Sir, you must go see a doctor. Your leg is swollen up. Uh, so she sounded uh, pretty concerned, and I took another look at it, and uh, that seemed like probably a good idea. Uh, I asked them where I should go. Uh, they directed me to a doctor clinic down the street, or maybe five, six blocks away. And as I was leaving, they actually chased me down the street to uh, change their recommendation. They, they have somebody knew of a dermatologist even closer. Uh, so they directed me there, and off I went. This is not my dermatologist, um, but it's a picture I found when I was looking for pictures of dermatologists. Uh, my dermatologist was Dr. Ong, O-N-G, I believe. She had over 35 years' experience, I believe. Anyway, I sat uh, in her office for about uh, one hour, and she brought me in. She looked at it, and she told, gave me a prescription for antibodies, and uh, told me to uh, pack it with, uh, uh, with sea salt. And I had told her I was looking for Epsom salts. She said, Epsom salts are not available in the Philippines. I'm not sure why that would be, but that's the case anyway. Now you know. Doctor Who was also not my uh, dermatologist, uh, and uh, my, my office visit cost me 450 pesos. And uh, I, was, I was in and out of there probably in 15 minutes after she brought me in, uh, looked at it, uh, called it an abscess, wrote me the prescription, and sent me on my way. Uh, there again, uh, pretty much everybody in the Philippines wants to get paid when, before you leave. Uh, it can be cash, or uh, some places take credit cards. Most of the hospitals, I believe, will take credit cards. I'm not sure about the uh, public hospitals. You've got uh, public and private hospitals here. Uh, I went back to my hotel room and uh, took the medication I was supposed to take, and uh, a few days later, the maids at the hotel uh, came to me and said, Sir, your leg looks like it's getting worse, and it obviously was. 
Uh, so I believe it was the next Monday, uh, I went back without an appointment, uh, sat in the office for less than an hour. It was pretty busy that day, but she brought me in in less than an hour, looked at it. She had one of those looks that you don't want to see on a doctor's face and said, do you need to go see a surgeon today? And she set up the appointment uh, a few blocks away at the doctor's, Cebu Doctors Hospital University. And I uh, went over there, had a nice long chat, probably 15, 20 minutes with the doctor about the Philippines and US and cultures and all those types of things. Um, anyway, he took me in to the operating room and uh, cut away. He called it an abscess and he drew me a little picture about how deep it probably was and what he was going to have to do, cut all that flesh away. He gave me a shot that uh, deadened the area and as he cut, I never did feel anything after that. Uh, I was, he did have an intern with him. Uh, it's a teaching uh, hospital. Uh, let's see, it started at uh, 137 and he finished at 150 according to the sheet. And uh, he suggested that I get uh, two doses of, um, of uh, tetanus shots. And that's something in the Philippines and many countries uh, require this sort of thing. I know Mexico does. If the doctor needs something, whether it's uh, medicine, needles, uh, bandages, whatever, you need to go to a pharmacy and purchase it and uh, bring it back to have it administered. And uh, so I, I left and went and purchased the two doses of uh, tetanus and they gave me those shots. Uh, it actually came with two different needles being two doses. And they sent one needle home with me, since I had paid for it, I guess. Uh, so that found that interesting. After the uh, shots were administered and uh, I'd already had the surgery, they sent me down to the cashier to pay the bill. And uh, I can't read the, the receipt for the hospital, but the doctor's charge just for everything that he did was 3,000 pesos. Um, so I had 450 initially at a dermatologist. I had antibodies uh, for the first week. I had the hospital charges, I believe that were right around 1,500 uh, pesos, the doctor at 3,000. Then I got another uh, two weeks of worth of antibodies and some prescription pain medication, which I ended up not taking. I went back with the Advil. And the two tetanus shots, all of that ran me a total of about 8,500 pesos or 185 US dollars. Uh, pretty good deal I thought in the end considering. Now here's something you may find interesting also uh, virtually everything, in fact every everything that I have bought, every uh, uh, here on the left you have Tums uh, which is an antacid for your stomach in the middle is a probiotic that I, I take, and especially when I'm taking anti antibiotics, I take probiotics because the antibiotics kill a lot of the good bacteria in your stomach, intestines. And uh, everything that you buy pretty much is behind the counter in the drug store, and it comes, they ask you how many do you want? Or if it's prescribed, they'll give you what you have on your prescription. Uh, but the, they don't hand you a bottle of anything or jar, they hand you uh, these little uh, the cellophane packs, pl plastic packs, whatever they are. And uh, I know the first time I went to buy Tums, uh, she asked me how many I wanted, and uh, I said one, and she held it up, and she started tearing one off. I said, no, 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 I want, I want one box. And she just says, no, you can't have, you can't have one box. That's all we have. So I had to uh, settle for something less. And uh, when they ask you how many you want, they, they literally mean how many pills do you want? And that's how you buy pretty much everything. Now, uh, for six months now, I haven't found any Tums in Cebu City, so I've got to buy some other brands uh, that don't work nearly as well. Um, these Tums here go for five and a half peso. Uh, the brand I bought, the, there's another brand that sells for five and a half peso. The ones I bought the other day, which I don't care for, uh, sell for ten and a half pesos. Don't work. Uh, but anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. 
Now, in regard to uh, hospital room costs, I, here's a list that I found online. Uh, Chunghua, which is in Cebu City, probably one of the better hospitals in the city, if not the best. And uh, they're located near uh, the Fuente Osmina Circle, Robinson's Mall, a uh, big landmark. Uh, here it's, you can see a big circle in the, uh, on, on any maps that you see in Cebu City and here's some of the pricing I checked a couple other hospitals and they range uh, there's there's quite a range so if you're interested in other hospitals you just need to uh, go to the websites and get the contact information if it's not online I uh, go ahead and call them and get the details now this is just for the rooms uh, themselves and here's uh, additional types of rooms, critical care units and isolation rooms, which uh, will run, uh, have different prices also. Two or three of the uh, hospital websites that I checked uh, had what they call executive checkup programs. And uh, uh, the first one is usually level A is what they call outpatient. Level B uh, can be outpatient or inpatient. You might stay overnight uh, if you want. You, you pay for that overnight stay. You get uh, three meals out of the deal. And the uh, you know C D C D and E are all overnight stays. More intensive uh, stress tests and uh, many additional tests involved also. Um, this one at Cebu Doctors Hospital, they were, they were the only, one, only ones I found that had uh, pricing, and this uh, outpatient one was, what, 7291 if I can read it on the small screen on my computer. Uh, and that's pesos, not dollars, pesos. Uh, so convert, uh, convert it into your currency. I did many searches online trying to find uh, breakdowns of pricing and that type of thing, and it's, it's difficult to find current information. Uh, so a lot of the information that I found was quite dated, uh, three, four, five, six years old. Uh, I did find one site uh, uh, about two years old that said that the average office visit, short office visit in Manila, uh, for 15, 20 minutes, averaged 619 pesos. Um, I've seen, like, for dermatologists, I checked a lot of the pricing. A lot of them start at uh, 500 pesos for an office visit. Uh, some have a range of 500 to 700 or 500 to 1,000, depending on how uh, critical your issue is. Of course, whether they're in a clinic, whether they're at the hospital, I presume. I also checked a couple online forums that I'm f familiar with. Uh, one is called liveinthephilippines.com and one is called cebuliving.com. Uh, now the owner of liveinthephilippines.com, I believe it's a fairly recent article, and it had to do with uh, him going to uh, a private hospital in uh, Davao City, I believe, in Mindanao. And uh, there's, there's a lot of disagreement about how good pill health is, uh, but he was pretty happy with the results in the end. Uh, it's difficult to get uh, accurate information about what they're going to pay, apparently. And uh, I have it, and uh, I think it's, it's like, I think, 200 pesos a month. Uh, forget to get it. And you, you, you have to be here 60 days. And you have to apply and receive your ACR card, your uh, alien uh, certification of registration card. And then you can apply for PhilHealth. It's a government program, I believe, and it, it pays. Uh, I've heard that it only paid in uh, the government hospitals, uh, but he went to a private hospital, and he said that, indeed, it, it paid a good chunk of what he had there. He's got a good article on his site, liveinthephilippines.com, about... Uh, the different percentages that it paid in his hospital stay. So I would recommend that you read that. I also found an article on uh, SebuLiving.com website, and it, there again, it's a uh, a forum type thing. And and I did a search for uh, medical costs, doctor costs, hospital costs, and there's a fellow there that lives on Bohol Island, just not very far from uh, Cebu, Cebu City. And he went to the hospital, and it's a, it's a, uh, it's not really well equipped. He went in there, they did some blood work, um, and he had appendicitis. 
and the nurse actually took the ferry with him, I believe, like one in the morning, took a ferry over to Cebu City and had the IV, holding the IV for him all the way over. I'm sure he had to pay for that service. Uh, but regardless, they brought him over to Cebu City where uh, they were able to you know, put him in and do the operation and uh, take care of that problem. He said that his uh, hospital stay there, I believe it was uh, two or three days, I believe, his total cost there was 8,500 pesos. No, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. 85,000 pesos, 85,000 pesos, which U.S. is about $1,847. 85,000 pesos for know, three days, I think he said, and appendix operation. Uh, so you can decide whether that's a good deal or not. I'm not sure what I'm sure it would be much, much more than that in, in the U.S. and many places in the world. One thing you will find is the, the quality of what's available for you if you, if you live in the provinces, uh, in, the, in the smaller islands, in the smaller cities, uh, you're not going to have the care available to you, so you need to take that into consideration. Also, uh, like Davao City has a fairly good uh, 911 and uh, ambulance service, I understand. Many cities, even larger cities, don't have that service. Um, there is a group of doctors who put together an ambulance service, 24-hour uh, service in the Manila area, and you actually can uh, subscribe to it, uh, pay a fee uh, to become a member of it. Uh, many other cities, every, every city, every region is different in what they have in emergency services, so you should be aware of that when you're choosing where to stay, especially if you have health issues. In many areas, in many cases, uh, waiting for an ambulance is not a very good option. Uh, you should, uh, especially if you're going to be here for some time, uh, know somebody uh, close that you can call on to uh, help you commandeer a, uh, commandeer, to take a taxi or, or an empty jeepney. You might have to pay an empty jeepney uh, a couple hundred pesos uh, to take you to a, uh, a hospital if uh, if a taxi isn't available or a motorbike or a tricycle or whatever's available, it's best to get there. Now, if you're incapacitated, uh, that's another issue. Somebody uh, trying to decide how to get you to the hospital. Now let's talk about uh, U.S. health care in the United States of America. Uh, I saw this article a couple of years ago, and uh, my sister as a nurse I sent it uh, one similar to this to her she didn't believe it till she read it herself but if you do a uh, online search for third leading cause of death in the US uh, you'll come up with uh, a dozen different articles stating this that uh, it's it's the third uh, leading cause of death and the uh, leading cause and and that's uh, over 250,000 deaths a year in the US uh, because of mistakes in our health care system, medical mistakes. Uh, number one is heart disease, number two is cancer, uh, medical errors is next, and uh, respiratory diseases after that, accidents, strokes after that. Uh, but uh, over 250,000, over a quarter million people die from medical mistakes in the U.S. Uh, sometimes simpler is maybe safer. Uh, I've had the experience a couple of years ago when I was having some pains in my side, stomach area, and uh, at first I thought it was a hernia. The, the first doctor, physician's assist assistant uh, that I saw, she was sure it was a hernia and said, yes, you must, you must have that operated on very quickly, maybe even today and sent me to a surgeon. He immediately determined it was probably my gallbladder and we set up a, an appointment like three or four days later. Uh, he, he also told me to go to the emergency room if, if I had some major, major uh, pain, which I ended up, ended up but I, I just put up with it. Anyway, I had, a, I don't call it near death, I, I could have very likely uh, died twice on the operating table as I was being, uh, I was being 
woken up, the anesthesiologist told me that, uh, okay, you can breathe on your own now. Or he said, I'm going to let you breathe on your own now. And he left. Uh, they were running late for the start of, of my operation, and mine was a little difficult, they said, so it took a little longer. So they're running behind schedule now, so everybody's rushing to clean up. I'm sitting and watching all this take place. An alarm goes off, and uh, I don't think anything of it. It's, it's in the next bay. We're all, you know, there's only a curtain between uh, me and the, the next operation taking place. And uh, the nurse rushes over to me and says, uh, you're not breathing. You're not, you, need, you need to breathe. Uh, so I started breathing, and a little bit later, as I'm watching everything unfold, and everybody's cleaning up in a hurry, same thing happens again. Alarm goes off. I don't know what it is. I'm not aware of the problem. I don't realize I'm not breathing, uh, but uh, that's the issue. And uh, uh, my my sister, who was a nurse, uh, their clinic was taken over by a large hospital, and she says that... Uh, you know, it's run like a, a factory assembly line. She's got to drag the doctor from appointment to appointment. They've got so much time allotted for each each appointment. They don't have time to chit-chat. They don't have time to, a lot of times, uh, talk to the patient long enough to a certain uh, some of the other symptoms, perhaps, it's something else. I know of at least three cases in the last 25 years where uh, U.S. medicine was terribly wrong in their diagnosis, and a person almost died because of it. Well, here's a question for you. Will your insurance in your country, uh, in particular the United States, uh, cover you if you're overseas? Uh, in many cases, uh, the answer is no, but I had Blue Cross Blue Shield when I had my gallbladder issue. And uh, I called them because I know that uh, there is medical tourism. People go overseas to get things done for much less money. And uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield said, yes, in fact, they did have the hospitals that were approved overseas. And uh, she gave me an 800 number to call if I wanted to uh, see if uh, I wanted to go to one of them. It, it, it does two things. It saves them money and saves me money. Uh, I have a... I, it, on my deductible and on my uh, the seventy percent of the bill that I'm going to pay, uh, and not not seventy thirty percent. I I had a two thousand dollar deductible and a a third a seventy thirty plan where I paid thirty uh, percent of the bill after the de deductible, and uh, because I was in a fair amount of pain and I didn't want to risk traveling to another country not knowing how long I'd be there if there were complications. I chose to uh, have my operation done in the U.S., uh, but that's an option. You need to call your, you, you don't need to, you should call your insurance company and ask them. Uh, perhaps they have hospitals, very likely have hospitals in the Philippines or near uh, where you can get operations done if it's not a, a real, real critical emergency where you've got to get in right now and your insurance will cover you. Uh, that and then also watch the bills. I had uh, here in the Philippines, it's it's a big issue that uh, you know the hospitals. Everybody wants to get paid before you leave. In fact, uh, the story is that you won't be allowed to leave unless you pay until you pay the bill, and in which case every day your bill will continue to grow. Uh, I think Filipinos, uh, poor Filipinos, uh, can leave if they sign. Uh, uh, some sort of financial things sign over any property they have those uh, the the law is written uh, somewhat vaguely and I, I read on forums different different interpretations of the law but uh, you're going to want to be able to pay them uh, either have cash or credit cards available to you uh, when you're in a foreign country let me jump back to the uh, Philippines uh, for a couple minutes here and finish us off uh, speaking of uh, public hospitals um, and private hospitals probably too, um, you're often expected to uh, buy the supplies that the doctor needs, that the hospital needs. Uh, there's a guy with a YouTube channel called Talk Talk Cali, T-O-K, T-O-K uh, space C-A-L-I. Uh, T-O-K, T-O-K is one word. 
and then a space C-A-L-I. And uh, he had an experience where his uh, dog bit the neighbor kid, I guess, and it's his responsibility to take the kid to the uh, doctor and get the necessary shots and those types of things. And he's got a video up uh, in the last week or so where uh, he, uh, they, he, he he's there and he's waiting and waiting and waiting in line. He, they finally tell him, well, you need to go you need to go buy needles. And he comes back with the needles, gets back in line, waits again. And, uh, well, you need to go buy gloves, uh, surgical gloves. And I don't know if it was uh, two or three or four times where he had to leave and go buy something else. But uh, those are the types of things that you can, can, can find here. Uh, so if you're in that situation, ask them, is there anything else that I need to buy while well, I'm gone? and just sit there and hold your space until they give you an answer. Now one last thing I need to clear up. Uh, many of you have commented that I've started looking like I'm pregnant, uh, which started worrying me. I went and uh, had it checked out. I am not pregnant. I was advised that I stop eating so much though. So anyway, it, uh, you need to uh, nip those uh, rumors in the bud right now. I am not pregnant, uh, to my great relief. Uh, anyway, thank you for listening, or thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't, uh, thumbs up, uh, share, if you would do that, I would certainly appreciate it, uh, and uh, have a good weekend.